Hi, I'm Katie with Insect Art, and today I'm going to show you how to use your butterfly kit to mount your very own butterflies. To get started, first we'll have our tools. I have here my hydration box, which is a little wipey box, or you can use a Tupperware that I sent you, anything that has a lid that'll close. Uh, you can see inside of it that I have a moistened washcloth and the butterflies, which are in these little packages. Here. They have been in this container for about 24 hours and they're now ready to work with. We also have the spreading board, which mine is a big old chunk of styrofoam. Uh, pins, which are also in there, and you can see the little furrows that I dug. Just take your tweezers and scrape out a little kind of a hole there for your butterfly body to sit in. You'll see how they're used here in a second. So the first thing we're going to do is, oh, we also have our glass plates, which you may have uh, various sizes of these, depending on what size butterflies you're working with, and the tweezers, which you should also have a pair of. We'll begin by getting out our first butterfly and opening it up. I, I do this, uh, some of my butterflies come with staples in them. Uh, yours probably won't, but since mine do, I cut out the staples. And just carefully open the package. And you'll see what's inside. Here is the unspread butterfly, or moth in this case. This is the Sunset Moth. Urania rifaeus. And the first thing we're going to do with our butterfly or moth is uh, take it between two fingers. We're going to pinch the thorax just slightly. And the thorax is just this middle section of the body here. So when we pinch that, you'll see the wings open just slightly. This is actually uh, extending the muscles that uh, work the flight of the butterfly or moth when it is alive. So we're hoping to just get the wings kind of loosened up a little bit for spreading out. We'll just usually take uh, the two top wings here together and just give them a little bit of a flexing to get them ready to move. And since we've had this in the hydration chamber overnight or up to two days, they are good and flexible. So the next part of our work is to take two glass sheets in one hand and we're going to slip them in between the wings like so. Then we're going to take the whole package and move it. Let's see, where's one that you guys can see? Maybe up here. Move it into the furrow. You can see the body going into that little space that you dug out earlier. That is what's going to allow the body to be flat with the wings when we get them spread. So, we've got our glass plates, one in each hand. We're just going to use them to open the wings and lie them flat. Try to see a better picture here of what's going on. We've got the wings out now, which is really the hardest part. If you can do that, you can do, can do any of it. Now we're going to adjust because the wings aren't exactly where we want them. We might want these top wings to come up high a little bit. So I can gently just lift up the glass a little bit and you can, if you're really good, you can just use your finger and don't touch any more of the wing than you have to, but go ahead and just rotate it a little bit and put your glass back down and you've got, got that up more where you want it. You could also take your tweezers and Lift up the glasses a little bit, grab the wing with your tweezers. If you're afraid of touching it, no problem. You can pull it up that way and put the glass back down. Sometimes uh, the bottom wings are a little bit harder to get to, so I take a little uh, sewing pin and just kind of very carefully move them with that. You're not going to really make a hole in the wing, but you're going to grab it kind of in one of the thicker parts and 
Just move it around a little bit. If you make a teeny tiny hole, I don't think anyone will notice. But there, we've pretty much got the wings where we want them. Um, see if we can get any better view of it being spread out. The uh, last thing to really do is to check the antenna and the body and make sure that they're in the right place. And this butterfly uh, was sold to me as an A2 specimen, which means it might be missing parts. And sure enough, it only has one antenna. Um, no big deal. I can find another one and glue it on, or you can just take it off and pretend like it never had any to start out with, and most people won't notice. Um, in your specimens that you received in your kit, you got some probably A2 quality specimens or similar, which may or may not have antenna. So if yours doesn't have any to start out with, no worries. If it does, just use your pins to get them where you want them. And how to get the antenna to stay where you want it, usually you'll take two sewing pins and use them to make a V over the antenna. You'll take, I'll get some bigger pins here so you can see. And you'll have one at each end and you'll just want to kind of cross them and then you'll stick them down over the antenna and that will put it exactly where you want it. It's like so. Try to get a better picture of what's happening. Sort of. In any case, once you have it where you want it, you can take a look at the body and see if the body is where you also want it. If it's not quite where you want it, then just take a pin and kind of nudge it into place. You don't want to put a pin through the body of your butterfly, or at least I don't. Some people do, but uh, I don't think it's necessary to make holes in my specimens, and I don't want to see pins when I have them on frame, so I try not to make holes in them. You can use the pins to just kind of scoot them around where you want them, and when they dry, they'll stay there. So we'll just leave this guy to dry overnight, and he will be ready to put in a frame. Now, because that was kind of a lot, I'll go ahead and do a couple of others. So you can see, what do we got here? It's like a Morpho. Morpho Pileides from Costa Rica. Here it comes. Kind of, kind of boring on the outside, but once we get him open, we'll see how blue he is. We'll give those wings just a little bit of a flex here. And tug out the top wings just to get them ready for action. And go ahead and spread using this furrow here. So we'll put the two glass plates in between the wings and move this whole contraption into the furrow. Now we'll take our hands off the wings again and the two glass plates. We'll have one glass plate in each hand and we'll use them to just go down and gradually get those wings spread out. And that looks really pretty good. Don't need to do much adjusting with this one. Sometimes the wings go where you want them, sometimes they don't, but you're free to move them around as you like. This guy does have both of his antennas, so I'm going to use the two pins to secure each one in place. Alright, and if you ever do get a morpho, you'll notice that they're missing the abdomen from their bodies. That's because for some reason when they die, their bodies give off a kind of a nasty, greasy uh, residue that can affect the quality of the wing color. So that's why that part is removed before you even get your butterfly on a morpho. And the next one we've got a smaller little guy. 
This is a little Graphium uh, Weepsii. It's one of the only butterflies with purple on it. This one doesn't have any staples. This is how yours will probably come. So just carefully open the package. And we've got our butterfly inside. You always want to take care to handle your butterflies. You'll never want to touch them any more than you have to. And be especially careful about touching them on the side that you're going to show. These will be the inside or the back side when you get them into the frame. So nobody will see this side. It's not as big of a deal. But once we get them open, we'll want to be a little bit more careful. So again, we'll take the body and we'll squeeze it. And that open the wings a little bit. Go ahead and flex the top two wings. Get them ready. Get your two glass plates. Put together. We'll go over here, I guess. Stick the glass plates in between the wings. Move it on down. Put the body right over that furrow. And be sure the antenna are not going to get covered up by the glass. So we just want to adjust our glass around the antenna there and go down with the glass. And the wings aren't where I want them this time, so no big deal. Just going to lift up that glass a tiny bit. Take my finger here on the top wing and just move it up and out a little bit. Put the glass back. Do the same thing on the other side. And I got the top wings kind of where I want them. The bottom wings now are not quite there, so just take a little pin. We got the cat coming up. Okay, thank you. Get those folded out back where I want them. You can try to use your finger. You can try to use the pin. The tweezers sometimes are more helpful with the bottom wings. It's kind of, I don't know, hit and miss on the bottom wings are definitely harder than the top wings. Sometimes you have to take that plate off completely and just adjust with your fingers. You may ruin a few doing that, but that's what practice is for. And there we go, that looks reasonable. We'll take the antenna now and pin the antenna down. All right, we'll try to get a better view of the butterflies we've done. Glass plates. You can sort of see them on there and see the glass plates over the wings. We're going to leave them just like this for a good 24 hours or at least, at least overnight. They'll probably be dry in 8 to 10, but just in case, try to leave them for around 24 hours. Then you can carefully remove your pins and the glass plates and use your tweezers to remove the butterflies. On the spreading board when you're finished and you can move them into a storage container like this Tupperware here I've got several butterflies ready to go here and you would uh, use your tweezers to pick them up by the body don't don't pick them up by the wings unless you absolutely have to always handle them by the body and you can keep them in a Tupperware container like this probably on a paper towel just to be sure that they're not going to move around too much Pretty much indefinitely. If it's going to be for a really long time, you might want to put them in the freezer just to keep bugs at bay, but uh, bug problems are fairly rare. When you're ready to glue them in the frame, you'll just take a butterfly in your tweezers. There's a little weak CI. It's one of the ones we just did with the purple on him. And I'm doing what I said not to do, which is touch the wings, but uh, you'll take them by the underside and then you'll just put your glue right there on the body. Don't put your glue on the wings. It may discolor the wings. Whoops, and there he goes. Not the best example there. Sometimes they get away from you. He's all right though. Um, put your glue on the underside. The underside of this guy is pretty too, it's green. 
But we'll just put the glue right on his body. And you can use Elmer's glue. You can use... I haven't found a glue that doesn't work. So pretty much anything that's not terribly caustic probably would be best. And put them into your frame. And then you'll want to be sure your frame has some kind of a glass protector over the top of it to keep the light from doing too much damage or anything else from doing too much damage. And you will be finished. Good luck with your spreading and mounting, and I hope that you have many successes and that you will be back for more butterflies. My online store is at insectart.etsy.com, and I have all kinds of butterflies that are assembled and unassembled. Uh, you can do whatever you want. Do whatever your creativity inspires you to do. Good luck with your new hobby, and thank you very much.